If you're looking to jump right into Photoshop and get to work, you can certainly do that. Photoshop is ready to run as soon as it's installed. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you some settings that you can change in Photoshop that will improve your performance. Later on, when you want to customize Photoshop further, come back to this section and I'll show you in depth how you can get the most out of each item in the Preferences menu. So how do we set up Photoshop to be efficient and get you out of the Preferences menu and into illustration or color correction or whatever you want to do in Photoshop as quickly as possible? First, let's open up the Preferences menu, which on the Mac is here under the Photoshop menu. Click on Preferences and select General. Now, if we were on PC, as we talked about earlier, that would be Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, Menus. Right here, it would say Preferences. So, the third way you can get there is Control or Command K. All right. So what are the most important options here in the entire Preferences menu? Let's talk about Export Clipboard. Export Clipboard will basically save any information that you're cutting or copying in Photoshop. It will save that information to RAM and make it available to other programs. If you're using Adobe Premiere, if you're using After Effects, it'll allow you to paste image information right into another document. This is going to be something I generally turn off because I don't want to keep that much information in the RAM. Also, between you and me, sometimes I have RAM issues because I have five or six programs open at once, so as little RAM as I can be utilizing at any given time, uh, the better. So I turn this off typically. Now, again, if I need to export some stuff from the clipboard, then that's fine. I do that there. Uh, then that's fine. I do turn that back on. But for the most part, leave that turned off. All right, next we'll come down to the file handling menu. The main thing to take a look at here is save as to original folder. That means if you hit file, if you go up into the files menu and hit save as, will it save to the folder where the original document that you opened came from? Or uh, if you open 10 or 20 images and you want to change each one, let's say you're doing something batch, you're adding a watermark or you're cropping everything, and you want to save all of the new cropped files to a folder that says cropped, then you'll deselect this checkbox here. And every time you save, you're not going to be saving to the original folder where the file came from. Instead, you'll be saving to this other special folder called cropped that you set up ahead of time. So you're going to have to decide that depending on the job that you're working on. Maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility. Again, this is another one that depends on what I'm working on. I'll typically leave it on ask just because there are some times where I'm going to want to save this information. I do a lot of video work and this will maximize its compatibility with Adobe Premiere, which I also use. The difference between maximizing and not maximizing is if you're maximizing compatibility, Photoshop saves your layered image along with a flattened version of the same image. Well, that takes up a lot of space on your hard drive. So when the dialog box comes up, typically if I'm doing an illustration, I'll click no. And if I know ahead of time that I'm gonna be doing illustrating rather than photo work, I'll just click on never. So I can do two or three or four illustrations and it will always save them without the flattened version. But for now, we're gonna leave this on ask. Recent file list contains, switch that over to 20. And what this does is when you come up here to the file menu, hit okay. Come up here to the file menu, open recent. Now we have our most recent 20 items that have been opened which we can then open again at a later time without having to dig them out of our file structure on our computer. All right, control K, we're going real quick here. We're back at file handling, drop down to performance. Performance, most of this stuff you're gonna to wanna to leave exactly how it stands. Make sure that your detected video card is here and make sure that enable OpenGL drawing is clicked on. What that does for you is it allows your video card to pick up some of the rendering work so that your processor is freed up to do other things. I always leave the memory usage in Photoshop, wherever the default is, about 70-75%. Uh, the one quick thing I want to talk about is web work, tall and thin. If you're working on a small image, anything basically web size, and you're using lots and lots and lots of layers, this is going to give you the best performance. This is how I work. Typically, I'll be working on something small for web, and tall and thin is the mode that I usually have turned on because I'm usually working on something for web and I use probably upwards of 30, 40, 50 layers, sometimes 100 layers. Conversely, if I'm doing illustration, and it's a large illustration that I know I'm gonna print out, I'll switch it over to big and flat, and what big and flat means is you're using a high resolution image and only a few layers. Default is fine, but like I said, for me, for web, tall and thin. The only other thing to get you started is I would say drop down to units and rulers and switch rulers to pixels. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure, as you can see here, it's already done, but I'm pretty sure by default it's on inches. Drop it to pixels because this is how we're seeing the information in the Photoshop space. We're looking at the pixels, it's easier to measure this way, makes everything go faster. Uh, all right, now you're ready to get started. That was about five different things. Switch those to the correct option to give you better performance, and jump right into Photoshop. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and if you have any questions, send them to requestitmahalo.com. Thanks for watching.